I always get what I visualize in only three days using this method. Welcome to Spirita Vivo. How can we better manifest our desires? Again and again, we hear that our subconscious plays an essential role in this. Is it possible to influence my subconscious to make my wishes come true? More than 50 years ago, best-selling author and spiritual teacher Dr. Joseph Murphy already dealt with this question. Murphy claims in his book, The Power of Your Subconscious, that he could manifest his desires within three days through his visualization method. He believed that the power of the subconscious mind was so strong that it could achieve quick and effective results by visualizing correctly and focusing on positive outcomes. In doing so, his research also addressed why we become so preoccupied with the things we don't have and miss, and why many of us have trouble with not attracting the things or events we desire into our lives. Instead of what we want, on the other hand, our minds are so often preoccupied with what we lack. Can we turn off these thoughts, which sometimes feel like a carousel of thoughts? Before we get to the amazing imagination of the famous artist Michelangelo, let's let Dr. Murphy get a chance to speak. Let's also look at what our topic today has to do with a woman in her lake house, why each of us owns a computer before it existed, why even Harvard University looked into it, and the four methods we can use to improve our lives. Let's begin. The mind can be trained and stretched. Dr. Murphy says to focus more clearly on our desires and our goals by making space for them for the fulfillment of our innermost aspirations. In his best-selling self-help book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, Joseph Murphy addresses the question, how does visualizing desire help us overcome negative thoughts? In other words, what we think and feel about the world is who we are. Perhaps the most incredible historical sculptor, Michelangelo, once claimed, I saw the angel in the marble and chiseled until I freed him. He also said, I saw David in the marble. Michelangelo's imagination was so vast that he saw the sculptures in all their details before he created them from his subconscious. What a genius in his profession. Much like creation works, when we visualize our desires, we immerse ourselves in the experience of already having them, and as a result, it causes our minds to work for us. Let's look at an illustration to understand why it is essential to visualize your desires. Let's say there is a woman who lives in the city. She imagines moving to a small village outside the town where she can start a new life and write a novel. She sees herself sitting at a wooden desk with a cup of hot coffee, listening to the gentle call of a morning dove, feeling the warm sun shining on her through a large picture window, and contemplating the calm lake with its cold water that borders her property not far away. In her imagination, this ideal image of the woman is burned into her subconscious so profoundly and in such detail that positive emotions rise in her body so that this, the reality she longs for, must inevitably manifest sooner or later. According to Murphy and other spiritual sages, our subconscious mind cannot distinguish between reality and imagination at a certain point. If you imagine something permanently, and your most profound emotions further permeate this, it will lead to the same emotions and feelings as in reality. What does our subconscious have to do with a computer? The conscious mind is one of the two components of the brain, while the subconscious mind is the other. The subconscious mind enormously influences our thoughts, emotions, and actions. Joseph Murphy believed that the subconscious mind controls 90% of our thoughts and behaviors, while the conscious mind only controls the remaining 10%. Murphy explained that the subconscious mind works like a computer, recording all our experiences, thoughts, beliefs, and emotions throughout our lives. These experiences and opinions then influence our behavior, even if we are unaware of it. 
Murphy argued that many negative thoughts and beliefs we have are embedded in our subconscious mind and that these negative beliefs can influence our behavior and decisions. Therefore, according to Murphy, targeting the subconscious mind and promoting positive ideas and thoughts is vital to a more fulfilling life. In fact, the conscious and subconscious minds are constantly communicating with and influencing each other. For example, when the conscious mind makes a decision or sets an intention, it sends that information to the subconscious mind, taking appropriate action to implement the purpose or determination. Now we come to the exciting point of how we can program our consciousness like a computer. If we repeatedly play a scene in our consciousness, for example, a very positive event, like the woman in the little house by the lake, our subconscious will accept this as natural. It will evoke the same emotions and feelings as in an actual situation, as if it had already occurred. It can show itself with tears of joy, a general sense of well-being, and so on. Unfortunately, this also works on the less beautiful side. You have imagined a frightening situation. The subconscious mind may see this situation as accurate and can therefore trigger the same emotions and physical reactions as if we were in this situation, such as sweating, racing heart, stomach pressure, and the like. In an article titled Visualization, Murphy went into detail on the subject, offering numerous visualization techniques that have since been used by thousands of people worldwide. He writes that changing the brain and body changes the brain's ability to distinguish between what is real and what is just part of your imagination. Have you heard about the incredible Harvard experiment with basketball players? A well-known experiment Murphy refers to in his book, The Power of Your Subconscious, is the Harvard University experiment conducted by psychologists to study the effects of visualization. In this experiment, formed three groups of basketball players were the first group practiced shooting baskets for an hour every day. The second group visualized themselves shooting baskets, and the third group did nothing. After a few weeks, the first group, which had practiced physically, had increased their scoring rate by 24%. Surprisingly, the second group, which had only visualized, increased their scoring rate by 23%, almost as much as the group trained physically. The third group, which had done nothing, had not improved in their hit rate, which, of course, was no surprise. The experiment shows that visualization is a powerful technique and that the subconscious mind cannot distinguish between an experience and a visualized experience. In other words, when we imagine and visualize our goals and desires as if they had already come true, we send powerful positive messages to our subconscious mind that can help us achieve our goals. Wayne Dyer, another internationally renowned author and speaker in the field of self-development, advises in his book to constantly imagine yourself surrounded by the circumstances you want to create. He provided an example to illustrate this idea by noting that the Wright brothers and Thomas Edison did not think about staying grounded or in the darkness of things. Instead, they focus their attention and focus on an enticing vision. The second technique involves focusing on a word or affirmation. It is a very straightforward technique. The method consists in writing down a short positive statement that expresses the desired state or change, such as I am an internationally recognized author. This statement should be written in the present tense as if the desired shape or adaptation has already occurred. Then in the morning, focus on this affirmation for two to five minutes and repeat it inwardly or aloud to program the subconscious mind. It is essential to associate the affirmation with positive emotions such as joy, gratitude, or self-confidence to enhance the effect. Murphy said that saying affirmations permanently causes the subconscious mind to accept them as accurate and align itself with them. Your ability to envision your goal and make it happen will improve as you experience your desire more intensely and with solid and positive emotions. 
How about introducing yourself as a lead in a movie? The mental movie approach is the third visualization technique. A famous Chinese proverb says that a picture is worth a thousand words. It is Joseph Murphy's well-known technique which he frequently discusses in his book. Murphy emphasized that the subconscious mind is best addressed through images and pictures. If one imagines a particular situation that represents the desired state, such as a successful book publication, a harmonious family life, or good health, the subconscious mind will accept this idea as accurate and act accordingly. It is crucial to make the image as detailed as possible, and to include all senses. One should imagine how one feels, what one sees, hears, smells, and tastes. Murphy emphasized that the mental movie approach technique is especially effective when it involves positive emotions such as joy, gratitude, or self-confidence. William James, one of the founders of American psychology, emphasized that the subconscious mind will manifest any image held in mind and supported by belief. He recommended acting as if the desired state or change had already occurred. James said, Act as if I am and will be. Not a bad idea. We're making our future out of paper. Using a vision board is the fourth effective visualization technique. A vision board can create clarity and make dreams and goals indelible in your mind. Create one using a poster board of any size and paste pictures, symbols and words from magazines and other sources onto the board. Use creativity and deep intention to consider anything you want. From a vacation in Italy to completing a long-standing project. Let's move on to the subject of self-sabotage. Yes, we don't like to hear that. But we sometimes ask ourselves, but why does it often not work? The reasons can be lack of confidence and over effort are classic causes of failure. Negative insinuations and doubts about oneself block the process. Avoid statements or thoughts like, I can't get an answer, maybe it won't work. It's hopeless. These can easily lead to failure if repeated with intensity and emotion. As Dr. Joseph Murphy points out in his phrase, easy does it you. All you have to do is ask the universe, the higher power, for trust and let go to sustain the process. It's simple. Reject any negative thoughts you have about yourself or your desires and refuse to consider or accommodate them. Neutralize the negative thoughts as soon as you become aware of them. For example, if you think, I'm stupid, immediately break the pattern and say, I'm so brilliant. It won't happen if you don't believe what you tell yourself. Be brave enough to assert your right to wealth. Your subconscious mind will respect that assertion if you stick to it. These described techniques are terrific. They consistently and without exception work for everyone who applies them always and with the right mindset. They are the cosmic laws that always work, anytime and anywhere. Be a master of your life. Already Dr. Murphy knew these principles more than 50 years ago. If today's podcast inspired you, feel free to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you never miss a new episode. We would appreciate it very much. Thank you, and see you soon on our channel.